来呢，进入下一个主题，邀请到日本的农研机构中川路哲男理事来为大家介绍日本智慧农业的整体发展跟现况。他也会针对目前农业机构对于 AI 领域所进行的农业资讯研究，还有人工智慧研究的两项专案研究，跟大家做分享。同时呢，大家也会了解到农研机构呃，在整合数据资料库，还有在日本农业资讯平台共享。呃，日本农业资讯共享平台 Wagri 这项工作项目的执行概况，所以我们接下来我们会呃邀请由这个日本的专家来跟我们分享日本智慧农业的发展概况。Hello to everyone attending international conference on smart agriculture. I'm Tetsuo Nakakawaji, Vice President of National Agriculture and Food Research Organization (NARO). Today, I will talk about current status and future of smart agriculture in Japan. Uh, this is an outline of my talk. The first is a brief description of smart agriculture in Japan. The next is an overview of NARO for which I'm working. The last is three activities of Research Center for Agriculture Information Technology, ARKITE, Lanolds International Internal Research Department. At first, I'd like to introduce status of smart agriculture in Japan. As you know, smart agriculture is a new type of agriculture with the use of robotics, AI. And other advanced technologies. In these years, smart agriculture demonstration projects are underway in Japan, funded by the government. Smart agriculture demonstration project has three missions. The first, strategic technological development to solve labor shortages. And respond to changing demand trends. The next, production cost reduction, tailored to diverse site realities. The last, improve profitability of management entities to improve productivity per capita. To fulfill these missions, demonstration projects are being conducted. Through Japan, as you all know, there are various stages of、uh, crop production. So we are steadily advancing R&D on automatic robots and agricultural machinery,、uh, as well as production and work management technologies using ICT and AI. Through these R&Ds. Smart agriculture demonstration project realizes technology updating, cost reduction, and profitability improvement.、Uh, I would like to briefly present examples of、uh, smart agriculture demonstration project.、Uh, this slide shows examples of improved work efficiency at each growth stage in paddy. Uh, left one uh, in uh, tilling and leveling, the cooperation work between conventional tractor and robot tractor has the effect of reducing the work time per hectare by 41 percent. In the middle, in transplanting, the use of robot transplant tractor. Has the effect of reducing the number of people engaged in labor by 40 percent. The right side,、uh, in the harvest, the use of robot combine harvester has the effect of reducing the work time per hectare by 20 percent. This is another example: a drone equipped with a camera suitable for data acquisition. Is used to take photos of a paddy from above. Next, the plant growth status is mapped from the captured data. 
This makes it possible to adjust the amount of fertilizer applied based on plant growth conditions. The introduction of this sequence of operations and maps based variable fertilization has demonstrated a 10% increase in productivity and 22% reduction in nitrogen application per yield. In these projects, key technologies such as AI, robotics, and data management are developed at NARO. So I will explain about NARO next. Overview of NARO. Uh, NARO is a national research institute established in 1893 and headquartered in Tsukuba, Ibaraki Prefecture. The total staff consists of about 3,000 employees, of which 1,700 are researchers. It consists of 15 research centers and institutes, five regional agriculture research centers, and funding agency. In this way, research activities are conducted at research centers located throughout Japan. In order to implement the result of our R&D into society, we Activity, actively promote joint research and technology transfer activities in collaboration with the national government, prefectures, universities, and private companies, as well as introducing the result of agriculture produ producers and consumers. NARO's mission is to contribute to the following goals by realizing next generation agriculture. The first, improvement of food self-sufficiency and food security. The second, strengthen industrial competitiveness of agriculture and food products and expand exports. And the third, balance between productivity improvement and environmental conservation. Agriculture faces many problems, both domestically and internationally. In Japan, the most important issues are market shrinkage, low self-sufficiency, super-aging society, labor shortage, and population decline. We are planning to solve these problems. We call a plan small, Smart Food Value Chain. Smart Food Value Chain is NARO's initiative to realize next generation agriculture. This plan is designed to link and accumulate information from breeding to consumption making it possible to upgrade production, add value in sales, and optimize distribution. The accumulated data are analyzed by IAI for optimization of the entire process for productivity improvement, reduction of waste, total cost cut, and technology matching. In addition, Data from each process in smart food value chain are accumulated in the uh, agricultural data collaboration platform, WAGRI. WAGRI is a public cloud service that provides data and programs useful for agriculture, including weather, farmland, and yield prediction. Up to this point, I have provided an overview of Japan's smart agriculture and NARO. Next, I'd like to introduce the AI and IoT-based R&D at Research Center for Agricultural Information Technology, Archite. We established a new institute, Archite, in October 2018 to promote smart agriculture. 
so almost four years ago. This center has three missions. The first uh, is the research data on date management. We operate supercomputer, we call it Shiho, and the narrow integrated database, narrow linked database. These are linked together to provide agricultural big data analysis and AI processing support. The next uh, is uh, agricultural AI research. Agricultural AI researches are carried out by the collaboration of AI specialists and agri-food researchers. The third is a data platform Wagri. Wagri was developed as a platform to provide agriculture-related data and services to private companies such as agricultural ICT vendors. By providing basic data and functions needed by agriculture via APIs, we aim to encourage the creation of more advanced and easy to use services for farmers in the field. Let me begin by data management. Data is a very important source to realize smart agriculture. So we started gathering all data in NARO two years ago. In NARO, the, there were more than 500 sets of research data. Its volume is more than one petabyte. In terms of the genomes of crops and livestock, breeding, cultivation, diseases, food, food component, and functionality, and environmental data. But unfortunately, we found that those were stored on the researchers' individual PCs or hard disk drives, so scattered. At almost the same time, the Cabinet Office, Council for Science and Technology and Innovation called CISTI, required us to manage research data in an integrated way within each institute and to promote cross-sectional utilization and provide them to external, external parties throughout the open and closed strategy. Therefore, to effectively use of our data throughout the organization and also throughout Japan, we developed our agricultural information research platform, which is mainly composed of the narrow linked databases, a supercomputer for AI processing, and narrow. Narrow linked database aggregates the diverse research data distributed within agricultural research fields. Researchers inside and outside NARO can access the resource in the database. The other national institutes and universities on bio, uh, environment, and food research can also use this database by exchanging data on collaboration projects. Narrow link to database is composed of the primary database and secondary database. Primary database is a collection of raw data, like uh, uh, drone images, pest management, and weather information with the predefined metadata. In secondary database, we solve data incompatibility by unifying different data formats into a table format or graph format. It's an important pre-process for AI analysis. And the primary database is a kind of data catalog. Data attached with metadata are stored by file in this database. The primary database is composed of a metadata database and large-scale distributed object storage. Data are annotated by metadata and stored in the Amazon S3 compatible storage. 
In it aggregates and securely stores data within NARO and reduces the burden of researchers to securely store their data for a long time. The important thing is that the rights of data creator shall be secured by narrow research data terms of use, which was approved by the board of directors and declares the data shall not be uh, diverted to others without permission. It also visualizes the existence of useful research data by metadata. Data can be searched based on metadata and possibly lead to new research themas. It shares data and flexible access control. The access rights to data can be set by the registrant. Also, it's available to users outside NARO through user registration. The secondary database is relational databases and uh, graph databases for data preparation for AI analysis. Data are formatted, if necessary, using ontologies and analyzed on a supercomputer. The entity is Oracle uh, Enterprise Edition Extreme Performance on the Cloud. Thus, databases can be available in several formats like uh, RDB, Property Graphs, and RDF. It unifies formats as necessary for related research groups in the primary database. Like BioResource and Genome Integrated Database, Smart Breeding DB, and so forth. It leverages statical, statistical analysis and machine learning tools in conjunction with the AI supercomputer. Also, it has full security measures such as WAF, centralized server operation, and authentication and authorization services. Uh, here is an example of GraphDB on Genome and bioresources information. Genome-related information is stored in various formats for each species. This makes AI analysis difficult. Therefore, we converted them to the standard format called RDF to enable cross-sectional sectoral analysis of vast amounts of genomic information across institutions and also species. Thus, a cross-sectional research cross-sectional search of genome data of rice, wheat, soybean, vegetable, fruit tree, and so forth was realized. It can also be linked with the other organization's data. Next topic is uh, AI. Uh, I will introduce the research and development of agricultural AI. Uh, this slide shows a map of uh, our agricultural AI research agenda. Uh, this map consists of research period as horizontal axis and fees of mathematics to be used in each AI research as vertical axis. Uh, as clearly seen, we are mostly focusing on short or mid-term projects uh, with two to four years research period, which means we are targeting at practical solutions for near-term agriculture problem. Also, uh, we can see uh, we need various fields of mathematics, ranging from uh, multivariable analysis to the latest deep reinforcement learning, depending on the type of problems to be solved. Uh, for example, classic but ever-advancing multivariable analysis is a powerful tool to programs like a prediction of harvest data or yield and uh, quality of fruits. 
Deep learning uh, technologies are, of course, very useful in various image recognition related to problems and automated robot tractors. In addition, to keep the latest mathematics available, we have uh, five prominent science, prominent scientists in each area as uh, technical advisors. As an example of AI research, we introduce a method for predict predicting sugar content of satsuma mandarin, citrus unshu, uh, in Japan, mika. The mandarin fruits harvested in the field are uh, sorted into classes based on the fruit sugar content before being shipped. The example of uh, branded mandarin fruits based on their fruit sugar content at the Saikai area in Nagasaki Prefecture is shown on slide. Uh, bricks and the trail, uh, this is a no brand. Bricks between 12 and 13, Ajimaru. Bricks between 13 and 14, Ajikko. Bricks over 14, Dejima no Hana. So Dejima no Hana is the highest brand, so it sells for the highest price. So farmer can earn much money with the, this highest brand. Prediction of fruit sugar content prior to harvest enable us to determine if cult cultivation management is necessary to improve fruit quality, for example, to increase fruit sugar content. We intend to utilize this prediction method in the production field to produce high quality fruits and give great impact on farmers' income. Subsequently, we describe this prediction method in more detail. This AI method predicts the sugar content at the time of shipment in a given year based on uh, weather data for that year and sugar content measurement from the previous year. By using weather forecast data, the sugar content can be predicted earlier than the harvest. Uh, lastly, I introduced the research and development of WAGRI data platform. Uh, WAGRI is an API. Uh, API is an application program interface. API portal and membership service is more than uh, 60 members for now. It provides from weather and farmland data to commercial services like uh, plant growth prediction. Wagri users, Wagri users is uh, orange box, those vendors, companies. Wagri users can combine several data and services provided by APIs, and they can provide data-driven agriculture services. For example, the smartphones to farmers. Uh, this slide uh, shows the architecture of Wagri. Uh, Wagri is a three-tier architecture. The bottom side is a uh, bottom side is the data providers, middle is the data users, and top is the farmers. This three-tier architecture is called a B2B2C model, a business to business to consumer model, and thus sits between data providers and data consumers like uh, ICT vendors who provide, for example, smartphone applications to data use to end users like farmers. Oh, sorry. Uh, the advantage of Wagri is that the users can enjoy one-stop shopping for agricultural data and related services, which was a big, uh, which is a big advantage for both 
data providers and users. So far, Wagri is providing about 100 APIs. Here is the main data and services, for example, hourly weather information, uh, daily weather information, map data and aerial photo image, digital soil map, farmland polygon information, latitude, longitude information, fertilizer information, pesticide information, growth prediction programs, disease judgment programs, and so forth. For example of WAGRI data, food and agriculture ma materials inspection center, uh, FAMIC, uh, provides about 7,400 types of registered pesticide information. Detailed items are pesticide registration number, the active ingredient, concentration, number of mixtures, usage, dosage from name, and so forth. We update it twice a month. Since first of information from March 2018 is also stored, it is useful for application of the GAP certification. PAMIC provides registered pesticide master vocabulary, and then WAGRI formats the data with JSON format, which is a widely used data format in Internet services, and also widely used data transfer protocol in Internet services. Uh, here is an example of the pesticide registration information API call and its result. Where is that? where user can acquire the pesticide master data by specifying the pesticide registration number. These master terms, in other words, vocabulary or taxonomy, should also be standardized in the uh, international organization. Uh, finally, we expect that in near future, Various stakeholders will register agricultural data, such as yield data, market data, weather data, and so forth. Those, who, those will be used if it's interoperable to improve working efficiency and profitability and to reduce time, labor, and cost in several data-driven agricultural scenes, such as the best work planning, agricultural info automation, growth condition confirmation, pinpoint pesticide spraying, variable scattering fertilization, suitable harvest time prediction, and stable shipping of high, high, uh, high quality crops. So we need to share the information and knowledge through uh, this uh, interoperable platform. So I'd like to uh, conclude my talks. Uh, in the conclusion, data interoperability is a key issue for data-driven architecture. Uh, thank you for your attending.